Guys, I am so excited to introduce you to our guest today. I have had the pleasure of meeting this gal in person in New York when we both attended a really incredible Founders Dinner put on by our business coach. Kenda is an incredible business coach, marketer, sales expert. And to be totally frank, she is one of the people that I feel like is most similar in terms of her mindset to marketing and sales to me. So I am so excited for this episode to nerd out together. Kenda is a barrel racer and cancer survivor who turned into a seven figure CEO. She was born with a rare eye cancer that had a survival rate of 2%. And during her battle with cancer, she was introduced to therapeutic horseback riding, which grew her into becoming a champion barrel racer and rodeo queen slay. So with her platform that she grew for barrel racing, she found a new love of public speaking and landed her first gig in the social media management space as a social media manager for her barrel racing mentor. She discovered she was naturally gifted at this and got her first ever client to scale to eight figures in their time working together. Since then, she's obviously launched her own business and scaled it to seven figures in the first year and grew her Instagram from 300 to 20,000 followers in 30 days and went viral on TikTok, amassing 100,000 followers in 35 days. She now helps other people scale their businesses all organically through psychology backed content and has helped thousands of clients today. So I'm so excited to have her on the podcast. I hope that you guys enjoy this episode with Kenda and here we go. All right. All right, guys, I am so excited to be here with Kenda. Like I said, in my intro, her and I feel like are so freaking similar in the way that we market and sell for our business and for our clients, honestly. So I'm really excited to nerd out with you today. Um, So welcome, Kenda. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm ready to nerd out. This is amazing. (laughs) I I feel like anytime I hear you talk about like sales psychology or buyer types, which obviously we're going to get into, I'm like, yes, my girl, you get it. You know. (laughs) Yup. Yup. Okay. Well, so before we dig into all that, tell us a little bit more about like your background. Obviously you've created like a million dollar business at this point. You're an expert in sales psychology. Give me all the tea on that. Yeah. So the (laughs) The way I got into this is something like so off the wall that most people would not like expect. So I literally am where I am today because I was diagnosed with eye cancer as a child. And because of that, my parents put me in therapeutic horseback riding lessons. Because of that, I ended up barrel racing and rodeoing. I was a rodeo queen. And through that industry, I got connected with a really amazing mentor who now has like multiple eight figure businesses. And as a favor to her was like doing social media management when I was in high school. And it just kind of spiraled from there as I went to college and started bringing on clients and then switched my major to software engineering. And then I was doing websites for people. And then I was like, oh, wait, people need help driving traffic to their websites. So it was a full circle moment. (laughs) That's so crazy. I feel like I was reading your bio. I was like, I never knew that that's how you got into the industry. And that's crazy to me. I mean, obviously like you had a very natural knack for it. Number one, number two, obviously you're very driven. So I think you would have been successful doing like anything, but I think it's so funny how like, it's like that seven degrees of separation, right? It's like, honestly, you know, the people, you know, bring you into like such success, which is so cool. Yes. It's, so wild people are like how did you get into this like did you just like did you do social media marketing in college and I'm like I wish honestly that would have been easier like funny story (laughs) I love that well so then how do you feel like you became an expert in sales psychology because obviously you were talking about driving traffic creating sales and honestly in your bio when you were talking about how your first client you scaled her to like eight figures while you were working with her that's crazy and I'm assuming sales psychology had a huge play in that right Yes. So I, in the beginning, it started off as trial and error. It was like, you're young, you're a teenager, you understand social media, do this for me. Figure it out. I was like, okay, sure. Like you got it. I was going to do anything to be in her space. And so as she continued to grow, I was like, wait, this is working. And then it was, you know, kind of the pattern recognition of like, okay, why did this work? Yep. And then it became, wait a minute, I can replicate this. And so it started as trial and error and then ended up as just hundreds of hours of studying because it was like, okay, how can we improve the conversion on here? How can we make this better? Okay, we're getting, you know, 500 clicks on this pin. How can we up it to a thousand clicks on this pin? And so that's what led me down the sales psych route. And Mm -hmm. I just 
read so many books, so many yeah. books. <laughs> so much learning. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I feel like honestly, but that's to me, some of the most successful people are the people who are like, you know what, I'm just going to figure this out for myself. And then obviously you can go on to teach people like you just did how repeatable it is and how easy it is. But people forget like how much effort and work and learning goes into really being successful in marketing and sales. A hundred percent. People are like, okay, just give me the framework, copy and paste. I'll go do it. It's like, it doesn't work work. that way, right? There's certain principles that will lead to your success, but you're still going to have to put in some legwork to determine what's going to be activating for your people, for your brand, what makes sense for you. And then there's the personal brand element, which is a whole other thing. A whole other story. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's it's so funny because I feel like we get that all the time too. It's like, okay, great. Give us like the copy paste, right? And I'm like, no, no, no. Like this is actually <laughs> no, going to no, be no. work, unfortunately. So if you're ready for that, great. If not, you got another thing coming. Um, well, I love hearing about your background. I feel like it's really fascinating to me just to like hear where you started out. So obviously yeah. you had, you know, a really difficult like childhood and obviously you overcame so much adversity to kind of get to where you are now. What do you feel like were some key takeaways that you learned from that experience for how to really overcome adversity so you can be super successful and lean into your passions? That's such a good question. I will say that having the cancer, when you're a child, it forces you to grow up very quickly. Mm -hmm. And you are sitting in a room of very highly educated adults that are making decisions that are literally life or death for you. Mm -hmm. And so you learn two things very quickly. One, you learn how to assess a risk and -hmm. decide what's going to be best for you. And two, you learn how to make the most educated decision you can as quickly as possible, because if you don't, the cancer is going to spread and you're dead. Mm -hmm. So those were two things that I learned at an incredibly young age. And I think that's really carried into the business where it's like, okay, this is marketing. It's not life or death, (laughs) but we can make a very educated decision. We can evaluate the risk and we can do it fast. And that's something that I believe has allowed us to scale so much faster than, you know, anyone else that like started at the same time we did in 2020 is the fact that we're able to pivot. We're able to make decisions and we're able to evaluate the risk like Mm -hmm. that. Whereas other people are like, let me spend six months thinking about my brand pillars. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, that's such a great point. Cause I say this all the time is like the most successful people make decisions quickly. And it's not like they're just making random ass decisions. They're making educated decisions. They're doing the best with what they have in front of them and they're moving quickly. So that's crazy, obviously that you had to learn that through that situation. But I think it's such a powerful lesson that transfers very, very easily to a lot of different industries. So I love that. And I love the, the assessing the risk piece. What do you feel like in terms of business, most people don't understand about assessing risks or just risks in general as a business owner. (laughs) People think everything is a much bigger risk than it is, first of all, because it's like, okay, I invest in this coach. It's 25K, right? What if you don't get anything that they're promising you? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you still get? You got to see the inside of their systems. You got to see their onboarding process. You got to see the other side of what's actually happening versus what they're marketing. You got to see how they react under pressure, right? You still learned so much. And it, it, I mean, that's just one example, but there's so many things. It's like, what if I put this piece of content out and it doesn't work? It doesn't, no one sells. Now you have that information. Like, so what? I don't understand. Like there, in a lot of ways, there almost isn't a risk. Right. Again, it's marketing. It's not a life or death situation. The post didn't work. Create another one. Yeah. Put something else out. Right. It's not like it's a fail or a success. Mm -hmm. It's all just data. And people get so emotional. It's like your business is its own thing. It's its Mm -hmm. own living, breathing entity that has its own needs. And so you need to act in the best interest of the business, Mm -hmm. not necessarily your emotions. And it's like, okay, I might be very emotional and disappointed that this Instagram post didn't work, but now I know this doesn't work and I can do something else. Like it's really 
not that deep. Yeah. I love that so much. And it's, it's so funny when I hear you talk, I'm like, yes, amen. Thank you. Cause this is stuff that I say all the time when it, even to myself, honestly, I think we sometimes have to remind ourselves like, it's literally not that deep. It's going to be okay. Like take a step back, touch some grass. You're fine. Yeah. And I love that. Cause I do think people get so emotionally tied to their business. And I love what you said about the fact that it is its own breathing entity. Cause I consider that as well with our business too. And I think everyone should obviously where it's like, you're your own yeah. person don't attach the success or the failure, quote unquote, like you were saying, mm -hmm. of your business to yourself. It's literally just data and everything is figure outable. So I love that. A hundred percent. Well, yeah. the thing is, is like, it's just because something didn't work in your business, that doesn't devalue you as a person. Right. And that's where people have that disconnect or actually they have a connection where it shouldn't be. Right. It's like the success or flop of like a single post or a marketing strategy or a launch that doesn't define your success and your value as a person or as a founder. Mm -hmm. It's just something that happened. And now you have that information, like move on, right. <laughs> move on people. Come on. <laughs> we got to keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's so funny because people think that when you think that way, you're emotionless, but really it's what allows you to move so quickly is it's like, you spend so much time and effort and energy dwelling on these things that didn't work, convincing yourself it's not going to work again. It's like, no, you know what doesn't work. You know what you need to fix now. Go do it, right? Yes. I love that. 100%. Okay, well, so shifting gears, let's talk about sales psychology because we obviously want to nerd out about that a little bit. So I think a lot of times when we hear the term like sales psychology on social media, there's a lot of misconceptions about it. There's a lot of people have a lot of opinions about sales psychology. So Tell me what you consider sales psychology to be and why it's so important for people marketing their businesses or brands. So people heavily overcomplicate it. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different avenues that you can take under the sales psychology banner, but ultimately it's a, at its simplest form is having the understanding of what powers people to make decisions Mm -hmm. so that you know what buttons to push to get them to buy yep. like that's that's all it is and what it you know to your point with people's opinions yeah what it empowers you to do as a marketer is to actually lead with integrity through your marketing and through your sales because it's a people first approach Mm -hmm. You're not just spewing out educational content. You and I both are yeah. like, like, can content. we stop? Can we stop, please? Yeah. And the bros come for us, but it's like, it's, you know, you can educate and you can give value mm -hmm. or you could make sales. And the thing is, is that you can still add a lot of value through this like psychologically powered lens. And that's, I think, where people don't understand and it's like, when you have that understanding of the psychology, not only is your marketing and sales that much easier, but you're also able to ensure that you aren't selling things to people that they aren't a perfect fit for yep. because of your understanding of the psychology and the way that you're framing your post, the wrong people aren't going to be activated by it. The wrong people aren't going to be called in. The wrong people aren't going to click the buy button. And so it, you're also like saving a lot of people money and saving people from a bad investment where a lot of people are making these like massive claims mm -hmm. and their content isn't, you know, psychology back to all. And so they're kind of just calling everyone in and then they wonder why they have so many like upset and disappointed clients. It's yeah. like, well, because you're selling to random people rather than that, you know, integrity forward approach where you're wow. really only connecting with and selling to people that are a perfect fit. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel like for me, the biggest thing when we talk about sales psychology, the biggest misconception I've heard is like, oh, it's sleazy. Oh, it's bro marketing, <sighs> which I'm like, yeah, do not even start. So I want to know your take on that in terms of it being sleazy, bro marketing, slimy, too salesy. So <laughs> the bro marketers, they think that if they have brightly colored captions and they say it really loud that <laughs> that makes them authority on the subject and so funny. you know like you know exactly who I'm talking about yes. yep absolutely it's like the captions that jump it's like the colored ones and if they're like here's what it is you're like wow okay we've had too much caffeine today no literally it's like you, I need you to take a step back from the camera <laughs> you know yep 
because it's yeah first of all uh, like I said it's how can it possibly be sleazy yeah when you are like I said activating people based off of exactly what they need Mm -hmm. if it wasn't something that they needed they wouldn't be called in so Mm -hmm. I don't understand why people are labeling that as sleazy because in my opinion it's the farthest thing from it Mm -hmm. whereas you know the random claims and results and whatever that just kind of throws it as a solution to everybody Mm -hmm. that is unethical to me Mm -hmm. not understanding how to activate the right people versus just selling to everybody yeah because and I mean I'm sure you get a lot of this is like people think that using the psychology is manipulative right and it's like can you use it in a manipulative way yes yeah absolutely of course you can but if you understand the correct way to do it yeah then rather than manipulating people you're actually just delivering the information that you were already going to put out there in a way that they're going to be able to receive it because Mm -hmm. the goal is just for people to resonate with your content and go oh yeah that is something i do great and then they make that connection with you. It doesn't, again, it's not that deep. Like we're not right. getting them to hand over their firstborn child. We're just positioning it in a way where they're like, oh yeah, I do need that. Like, wow. wow, what a concept. Yeah, no, I. that was kind of what I was thinking about was the people who are like, oh, it's so manipulative. And I'm like, it's really not. It's literally just empowering people to make a decision. We're equipping them with information that makes sense to them in their brains. And I love how you put it of like, it's either going to activate the right people or it's going to turn off the wrong people. And so it's actually way more ethical than regular marketing of you just making these wild claims about products or services. So hopefully that's helpful for people who are like, that's lazy. That's, you know, unethical, blah, blah, blah. Absolutely not. Oh my gosh. It kills me. The people, the people that say, well, and here I would get canceled for this for sure. But (laughs) the people that are like, Oh, sales psychology is manipulative. Those are the people that don't understand it and don't know how to use it. So they want to turn people off of it because they don't know how to teach it. So that's the only way they can make a sale. Absolutely. It's like, don't use that tactic. Use this tactic because that's unethical and they don't know how to effectively use it. No, I totally agree. It's so funny because I think people don't understand what sales psychology actually is. And so when they hear it, they're like, oh, that's just unethical. I'm not doing that. But as soon as if I didn't say sales psychology, and I just explained it to you, you'd be like, hmm, yeah, that sounds like something that I would make sense. Do. That makes sense. <laughs> that sounds like marketing. <laughs> it's yeah, it kills me. Um, people think that like psychology is synonymous with mind control. And I I don't understand that. I don't know what I can say to expel those root like I can explain it till I'm blue in the face and there's still gonna be people that are like, that sounds unethical. That sounds unethical. <laughs> okay, so are you not in full ownership of like what you do? Are you not in control of your body and your mind? You still have a choice here. That's the really cool part, is everyone has a choice. Yeah, I I completely agree. Well, so then when we talk about like sales psychology and marketing on social media, how do you feel like it really changes i guess the way that we're looking at you know the the marketing landscape whether you're doing like regular marketing or sales psychology based marketing Mm. well i think first of all is people try to use every platform in the exact same way Mm. which makes it a lot harder for them different platforms are created for different things and different even formats of content on different platforms have different intentionalities and different ways that they should be used and so you know when you look at even getting as micro as the specific psychology tactics Mm -hmm. does it make a lot of sense to use like loss aversion in a tiktok no not really But it definitely makes sense on an Instagram story when you're going into a launch. Yeah. So I think part of the issue is that people, again, overcomplicate it because they don't know what to put where and how to infuse it into their content. And then the other shift is really just, okay, if you're using the psychology or you're not, it's basically, 
are you throwing tips and tricks at people that they don't need? Or are you delivering the exact same content through the lens of, again, getting them to go, oh yeah, that is something I need. Yeah. That's really all it is. All yeah. right. So when it comes to sales psychology, what would you say in terms of implementing that into your content or your marketing? What are your top three tips for people who are just kind of getting into the sales psychology space? Mm. So first and foremost is you don't have to immediately throw out everything that you're doing. If there's something that you know is working well for you, I don't want you to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. If if you're somebody who, you know, you're getting a lot of views, you're, you have a lot of visibility, don't stop doing what's working for you. Mm-hmm. Just figure out how you can add in the sales psych in addition to what you're already doing. It could be as simple as, you know, rephrasing a single sentence in mm-hmm. the video that you are already going to post, or it can be as high level as like infusing the sales psych into your offer suite and restructuring you know, the customer flow. It it can be at any level. So I'd say number one, just bring it into what you're already doing. Don't throw everything out if there's things that are working for you. Mm-hmm. Number two, I think that being able to create um, content that is psychology backed also goes hand in hand with having a decent production plan that's going to allow you to post consistently not spend 25 years on a 30 second TikTok video because it's going to be a lot harder to infuse those elements if you're not posting consistently to begin with and it's taking you so long that you don't even have the space to learn and practice implementing it into your content. Mm -hmm. So that's the second thing. And like a, a big thing for us is like we it really shouldn't take more than like an hour a week to create content for the average person. Like, unless you are like full blown where it's like, we're doing an eight figure, you know, strategy, like this year we're going to hit 10 figures. So now we have two video editors and we're also filming long form content, but we didn't start doing that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it, again, it just comes back to creating a plan and a strategy and a process that's going to allow you to practice infusing it. Yeah. <laughs> and then number three is, you know, if you are just starting out, you're a beginner, whether you are a beginner with implementing sales psych into your content or you're a beginner with content in general, mm-hmm. do not try to replicate what somebody is doing at an eight figure, multiple eight figure level. Yeah. Because we had to go through a lot of steps to get there. But if I started a new account and started posting exactly what I now post, you know, when I have one TikTok with 300K, another TikTok with 75K, like what works there now is mm-hmm. not what is necessarily going to grow you from the very beginning. Yeah. And so just trying to replicate and copy what bigger brands are doing is not actually, you have to go through the beginning phases the mm-hmm. beginning learning, the implementation and all of that. And as like a bonus thing, I'd say, if you're just getting started is understand that content creation is actually muscle memory. Mm-hmm. I always tell people they should read the book, The Talent Code. And I originally read it. Did my camera really just freeze? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you're okay. Take your time. I've been having so many tech issues today and so many other people have. I don't know what is going on. Something's in the water today, so you're good. There's something in the water. They're like, actually, you don't need to be on camera. You're fine. You're good. You can just talk. It's fine. All right, go for it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, the talent. Muscle memory. Yes. I always, I, I read the talent code first when I was barrel racing and it was just teaching you about muscle memory and how that white matter gets built up in the brain. And people are so hard on themselves when they can't do something perfectly the first time or even the first hundred times. And so I really have found that having that understanding of how your brain builds that muscle memory, Mm -hmm. because content creation is a skill, filming content in a way that's going to work and with, with the right, you know, energy face to camera, the right delivery, the right lighting, the right everything, mm-hmm. it's a skill that has to be learned and it becomes easier and easier with the muscle memory. 
Yeah. And so having that understanding of like, okay, these are the processes that my brain literally has to go through to get to a point where I can be really good at this. Yeah. I think allows people to stop being so hard on themselves mm-hmm. when it comes to creating, because it's like, I can give you a script that's perfect and it would perform great for me. But if you don't deliver it correctly, it's not going to do anything for you. And that's, that's where so many people. Yeah. Stuck, oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. I mean, I love what you said about like not reinventing it from the jump, like not implementing a whole new strategy, incorporate sales psychology into what's already working for you. And then have grace yeah. with yourself. Like you said, like it literally is a skill. And I tell people that all the time because people are so hard on themselves from the yeah. very beginning. They're like, why is it not creating sales? I saw this thing actually from Gary Vee the other day where it was like, you are setting way too high of expectations for a business that you just started. Like it is so normal for it to take a while for your audience to catch up, for your sales to catch up. And honestly, for you to get good at doing something like just because you're posting sales psychology, you know, content doesn't actually mean it's going to do what it's meant to do because you're probably not doing it right from the very beginning. You have to get good at it. Right. So I totally agree with everything that you said. And I, I love, you know, each of those pieces because I think they're so important and something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, you mentioned the talent code. Is there, obviously I know that's not really like sales psychology, but do you have any other favorite resources for our listeners about sales psychology, books, podcasts, any of those things? Yes. So highly recommend the book. It's called What Your Customers Want But Can't Tell You. Mm. It's all things sales psychology. She dives into, you know, pricing psychology and the mere exposure effect and how to ethically use loss aversion and all of those things. Um, That's an amazing book. And the author actually has a podcast as well. Um, it's linked if you read her book, it's in there, um, which is a really, really helpful resource. And she goes through and gives a lot of real world examples. And I really like the way she frames. I've read a lot of sales psych books and it's like, okay, the principles here, but it's so dry and abstract. She mm-hmm. does a great job of showcasing how to tangibly kind of put that into your business. So I really like that. The other book I love, which we haven't we don't really touch on buyer types, but I know that's something that people lose their minds about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And the the book that I like the most for that is actually not a sales psych book at all. It's called Surrounded by Idiots. And it's a book about the four different personality types, which obviously correspond directly with the buyer types. And it teaches you all about, you know, their psychology, what they care about, how to interact with them, and honestly goes so much deeper than any like book about the buyer types could um, Mm -hmm. because it's just about their personalities. So I absolutely love those two and her podcast. I love that. Surrounded by Idiots. That's an amazing title for a book, honestly. I'm like, it's so good. I would write that book. Yep, absolutely. I love that. Um, Okay, amazing. Well, that's all been super, super helpful. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want our listeners to know about you, sales psychology, any of those things? Oh my gosh, about me or just in general, I'd say the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway is like, don't make the mistake of thinking that other people think the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. And that's important from a business sense, from a personal standpoint, but especially in marketing, when you put something out just because you would buy it or you think it's good, doesn't yeah. mean that the other 95% of the populace is going to think and perceive and receive that information the same way. Yeah. And so to really be good at it, you have to step outside of yourself and go beyond, oh, I think this is good. I would like to buy this. I would like to watch this because other people do not think the same way as you do. And mm-hmm. that's been the hardest thing for me to learn. Yeah. And honestly, even as simple as you think something is, or if you think something is common sense, they absolutely it's not. <laughs> well, they don't have a clue. <laughs> they don't have a clue in the world. Well, where can our listeners find you? Tell me all the info about that. I'm literally everywhere. We have a podcast, The Social Media Millionaire. Um, I'm on TikTok, two places. I have just Kendall Laney and then Laney Media I'm on Instagram, Kendall.Laney. And we're really pouring a lot of time and effort now. We just hired two video editors into our YouTube channel. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a really great place for resources as well. I'm excited about it. 
Amazing. I'm excited to go watch that. That'll be awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking about this. I think that this is going to be so, so powerful for everybody to listen to who wants to know more about sales psychology. So I appreciate it. And everybody go follow Kenda and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys.